वेलकम टू माई चैनल डेटा टेस्ट एज पार्ट ऑफ डेटा ब्रिक्स वन जीरो वन सीरीज नाउ आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डेटा ब्रिक्स सिक्वेल वेयर हाउसेस डेटा ब्रिक्स सिक्वेल वेयर हाउस इज द कॉम्पिटिशन रिसोर्स जस्ट लाइक अवर डेटा वेयर हाउस सर्वर्स यूजिंग विच वी कैन एग्जीक्यूट द क्वेरीज देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सिक्वेल वेयर हाउस available in databricks they are serverless pro and classic let us observe them from the databricks warehouse i am at the azure databricks and i am visiting the sql persona i am picking up the sql warehouses here i get the provision of creating sql warehouse if i click on it you could see here it is expecting name for the sql warehouse and next up it is asking us to choose the cluster size cluster sizes for the sql warehouse decide its power okay how much capable they are at executing the queries they are provided in the form of t-shirt sizes smaller the size you pick lesser the power it is going to have and obviously right so based on that the billing is also lesser if you happen to choose 2x small you will be charged 4 databricks units per hour in few minutes we will be discussing about how the billing is done for utilizing the sql warehouses by default x large type of the cluster is chosen and it is going to charge you 80 databricks units per hour and this sql warehouse which you are going to create is going to auto stop after 10 minutes of inactivity you have created the server let us say but you are not executing the queries against that server it will check for 10 minutes within 10 minutes if no query is okay received it's going to auto stop it will be terminated if you don't that if you don't want that behavior you can turn it off and your server will be running unless you stop it but that's not the wise choice let us turn it off in case we are not using it so here as i was telling you regarding the cluster size more the uh, t-shirt size that you are picking more powers you will be getting from the sql warehouse so if you would like to finish executing your queries quick you should be increasing the size of the t-shirt here that is size of the cluster likewise if you happen to support multiple concurrent users okay firing the queries against the sql warehouse you are supposed to increase number of such clusters required for your workload here you can choose the auto scaling option by default the number of clusters will be one minimum one and maximum one but we have option of choosing it the moment i changed min to one and max to 10 it says it may consume from 80 to 800 databricks units per hour right mm -hmm. so this is per cluster 80 databricks units per hour per cluster you are going for 10 such clusters means it's going to be 800 databricks units for all the clusters fine the types you are observing here serverless pro and classic when you choose about the serverless the sql warehouse which you are going to uh, create will be up and running uh, within no time so the startup time is less and likewise let us visit and check out for uh, the different you know options and differences we have with respect to these uh, warehouse types uh, here you can see if you happen to choose the serverless with the serverless we get the photon engine feature predictive hive feature and iwm intelligent workload management as well but if you happen to choose the pro sql warehouse type you will be getting photon engine and predictive io 
if you happen to choose the classic you will get only the photon engine so what are these photon engine predictive io and intelligent workload management photon engine is the uh, is the service that can uh, speed up the query execution and that way it is going to reduce the total cost per workload also because your queries are getting executed quick predictive io is the feature which will be helping you do the io related operations wisely fine it will help you speed up the scanning operations that query may have to do while fetching the details for your query fine for example predictive io will be helping in optimizing the underlying file sizes and all next up we have intelligent workload management so this is something powered by uh, ai okay which will be helping in managing the workload very wisely so that we are executing the workloads uh, quickly and in efficient way finally which will help us in okay saving money okay cost effective solution it's going to provide us so that's what uh, you know those are the different features for our serverless pro and classic and uh, depending on your workload you can choose the required sql warehouse type now let us take a look at what are the different kinds of workloads which we can execute using these different types of uh, warehouses using classic sql warehouse we can execute add a queries and uh, we can execute the queries that can populate the dashboards we can connect our classic sql warehouses to the bi tools like power bi and tableau so overall we could say right we don't have advanced features with uh, classic sql and we can do lightweight analytics with this kind of sql warehouses we should be picking the pro sql warehouse when we have kind of consistent workloads which need a okay, bit of high concurrency so number of parallel queries that we may be executing is high means we should be choosing the pro sql warehouses so here uh, uh, maybe write some sort of uh, fine tuning and all uh, we have to take care for optimization teams running the regular reports and scheduled queries and all they can opt for the pro sql warehouses the last option the serverless so it gives you instant startup and very elastic scalability within no time you will be seeing that server will be up and running for you you can use serverless sql warehouses uh, to connect to your uh, bi dashboards when you kind of expect bursty workloads okay it is very unpredictable to know what kind of queries may be coming in so at, at that time serverless sql warehouses are helpful let us summarize uh, when it comes to startup time uh, if you are using classic and pro sql warehouses they may take seconds to minutes but your serverless sql warehouse will be available within seconds with regard to scaling you may have to opt for manually controlling or you may have to fine tune the scaling aspects using the classic and uh, pro sql warehouses but in case of serverless it is fully automatic concurrency is configurable with respect to the classic and pro but with the serverless depending on the workload that is coming in uh, it is elastic in nature so accordingly it will be adjusted Uh, coming to the cost the sql and classic warehouses they are better for steady use wherein kind of you, know, you have the predictable workload that time we can go for sql uh, you know pro or the classic type but otherwise if you don't know the pattern of the queries and all it's better we go for serverless warehouses when it comes to working with serverless sql warehouses uh, we need not fine tune anything with respect to the cluster management and configurations here with sql warehouses we may have to take care of fine tuning certain configurations and all so with that uh, today uh, we learned different types of the 
warehouses and all and here is a quick summary of uh, the different cluster sizes that are available and uh, uh, the power that comes with each size for example this x small will be giving you two virtual cpu cores with 8 gb of the memory if you happen to set up your sql warehouse with this x small size you can right at any given point of time uh, can execute 10 parallel queries so that is a concurrent slots uh, that is listed over here so if you happen to have very complex workloads and all it's better you go for larger size and if you expect uh, more number of users to be connecting to the cluster increase the number of clusters so this is a final uh, summary and next up uh, let us look at how is this databricks uh, charging us for uh, sql warehouse usage we saw that they have normalized billing in terms of databricks units for regular uh, workloads they will be charging around 0.55 per one databricks units but how many databricks units we are going to consume let us say we have a job and uh, that job may be consuming one databricks unit per hour if that job is going to run for 10 hours we can compute the total building this way total cost will be the databricks unit rate which is nothing but this one into how long you are running your uh, job for this case okay for the job which is consuming one databricks unit per hour running for 10 hours the charges will come around to be 5.5 us dollars in indian currency it's going to be around uh, approximately 500 rupees fine so thank you uh, that's all for this video uh, stay tuned for next topics